All right, next up we have Brian Renero. He's from MongoDB, and he's going to give a talk called Five Aggregations in Five Minutes, a nickel tour of the aggregation framework. Less than five minutes, but the same number of aggregations. I have to get my aggregation to minute density up. Um, quick thing here. Um, so I am Brian. I am a developer advocate at MongoDB. I've been there long enough to secure the email Brian with a Y. No last name necessary. It's just there's not very many Brian's with Y's out there. Um, but feel free to ping me anytime. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, the aggregation framework in five minutes. And the basics with the aggregation framework, all you really need to know or understand is the concept of the pipeline. The way that the aggregation framework works, for those of you who are um, new to it, is that just like we might construct an operation on the Linux command line by piping together a set of operations um, <clears throat> where the output of the first one is piped into the input of the next one and subsequent down the line, the aggregation framework, yeah, I learned how to do animations in PowerPoint, so I'm really proud of myself on this one, so I keep forgetting that I put that in there. In the same idea, we are going to um, build out an aggregation task by pipelining operators together and then sending data through that pipeline. In this case, um, it's a stream of individual documents from a collection being sent through these operations in the pipeline out to a resultant document or set of documents. Um, a quick thing I should describe is that the aggregation framework is um, for doing things, uh, basic reporting and some uh, analytics, okay? So uh, aggregate operations, uh, and it's designed to be very, very easy to use and perform it. One of the things that makes it easy to use is doing um, the operations or self-describing for the most part. Probably the most exotic thing that you will see here, oatmeal type exotic, is um, unwind, which is basically a looping operation on arrays. So what else do we have here? Um, let's go over here. That's about as uh, sexy as the presentation is going to be. So what we're going to be doing here is that we're going to do a simple projection. That's going to be this guy right here. The project operator, oh, damn, it's still not there. Let's try that again. All right. So you'll have to believe me that there is something called the aggregation framework, and I did do a lightning talk. And the notion here is that um, we're going to construct each of these uh, operators that are represented as JSON documents. So the first one's going to be a simple projection. Um, it, given a basic schema, here is the first document from the schema. I've created a sample set of just sensor data. Um, in this case, there's a value for it, but it's associated with sensor data that would be pressure, temperature, humidity, that kind of thing. Random data set to construct against this. Um, I want to project a subset of the fields on this uh, document and send it through the pipe. Uh, so here's my projection um, uh, operator here. I pass it in as an object into the aggregate method. And here is the result set, just a projection of two fields from the original document that I had. Um, second projection, or second aggregation, is grouping. I'm going to use the same uh, projection method I did before, and I'm going to add onto the pipeline a new grouping operation. This time I'm going to group by the device identifier, and I'm going to use the averaging uh, method here to average the, uh, the value of this sensor. Um, so I'll get an average per sensor um, from the uh, collection of documents that I've got. Number three, add to set. Add to set is to, uh, um, if I encounter a value, I want to add it to an array, right? And it's essentially getting distinct values from a set of documents and pumping them into an array. Here we, I'm going to project out the type of sensor, whether it's humidity, temperature, or whatnot. And I'm going to use the add to set operator here. And the result is I get this distinct set of operator, uh, um, types of sensors. And then finally, for four, I can match by geolocation. These sensors uh, send in where they are taking their sensor data at the moment that they take their sample. So if I wanted to uh, aggregate and do an average on sensor readings based on a geolocation, well, golly, I can do that here. I use the geomatch operator here, or, uh, and it's formatted in GeoJSON. Send it into the database, into the aggregation, and bingo. There's a lot too much to show here, actually. Um, the results are kind of ugly. 
uh, much like the presenter. So the output to collection is the final thing is I d um, uh, by default it's going to just output it to standard out uh, to the uh, shell prompt, but I can write back to a collection. So the results that I've aggregated, I can put it back into a collection for use later and it stays fresh for months. Um, and just in case you don't think that aggregations are very sophisticated pieces of mathematics or uh, operations, here's one that I like to pull out to show everybody how smart I am. This is uh, calculating the variance of sensor data. Um, so of course variance, then you square it, it becomes the standard deviation. So you can get some um, interesting stuff from it. Fun fact, this, whenever people see this, and there will be a quiz later if you want to memorize that aggregation task, um, this looks kind of wild, this uh, syntax for building an aggregation. The reason that it does is it's a JSON representation of an abstract syntax tree. Anybody know what an abstract syntax tree is? Anybody care what an abstract? Yes. High level uh, languages are compiled into abstract syntax trees before the final mode of uh, where they go into a decal tree um, and then they'll be compiled into binaries. Uh, the, uh, the person who originally designed the aggregation framework use the JSON tree structure format to represent an abstract syntax tree. So you can do lots of fun things. It's ultimately extensible as a high level language would be. And I think I've exhausted all my time. So thanks. <laughs>